Hey everyone, today I'll be doing Elite Code Weekly Contest 283. Um, this one again has prizes, so hopefully I'm trying to win the backpack today. That's what I really want. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> um. This one. Okay. Should probably convert this to quartz. Why am I can't type today? Something like that should do it. K1, K2, L1, L2. Alright, AC. Unique characters. Um, okay, I don't think this is the intended approach, but I'm doing it. I'm just going to sort it. Let's pick current. Yeah, I'm not actually sure how to do this problem. Oh, that's not good. Oh, okay. Where am I going? I'm just sort of just set things. Seven ninety four.
four. I need to get the root of the tree. set as well. Good. That doesn't look good. Okay, so I got the root correct on. X. Right. I don't actually know if this is correct. No, it's not correct. Eight ninety nine is twenty nine hundred thirty one. Replacing them in any arbitrary order will lead to the same result. All right, that was not good. <laughs> um, I think that was a fast solve, but it was it was an all right solve. But I have the two penalties, which is not good. Um, it's only been nine minutes, so the things aren't out yet. So I'll just go through the solutions really quickly. Okay, I'm a bit disappointed because I could have done well, but then I didn't. I kind of threw a little bit. But um, in this one, it's pretty simple. So first, um, I'm just going to pass the input. So here, A and C represents the row letters, and B and D will represent the row numbers. Then I just loop for each row number, 
for each row letter and then I loop for each column number and I'm appending that to the result. And the way I'm looping between numbers, to loop between numbers I'm just using a simple for loop. To loop between letters, what I'm doing is I'm taking the ASCII, like the character codes, looping from that and then converting those ASCII codes back into characters. Um, in languages like like Python doesn't have it, but if you use like C++ and this was a char, you could just increment the char. So that would actually be easier in C++, I think. Um, like, I'll, I'll show you what I mean, I think. So you could have something like this. So like, Um, we don't even in like you don't even need to typecast this into an int. You could also do that with a char since we guaranteed they're one digit numbers. Um, what should we do this? Like that probably will work. Hope. Okay, I, I see. This is probably because it doesn't like strings. Can I can I type past that? Nope. I don't know how to use C plus plus. No conversion. Okay, I give up. <laughs> Apparently, I just do not know how to use. I just don't know how to use C++ strings. There we go. That all works. Okay, that took way too long, but I don't know how to convert from chars to strings, but that works, I guess. Alright, it looks like yeah, unfortunately, I do have a really long penalty, but we'll keep going. Okay, this is the one that tripped me up. I do not know the smart way to do this. So the way I worked it out was um, in the final list, let's say that there wasn't any numbers. If there weren't any numbers, I would just choose 1, 2, 3, up to K. Now, since there are some numbers in here, that means that I will... Um, if we consider our final our final array, including the numbers in this array, um, then we can see that our array is going to consist of some prefix from one up to K um, plus the elements of numbers. Uh, I'll just make that X. Plus the elements of numbers which are greater than X. Uh, the reason, um, I think it's fairly explanatory to see why this is true. If there was, if I didn't include all these elements from one to X, then uh, I could probably, if I didn't include all these numbers from one to X and I still needed to append another integer, then I could just choose one of these first few ones um, instead of one of the greater ones. It, it's a pretty, it's, a, it's like a greedy idea basically. I think it's it might be easy if I like explain on like an array. So let's say I have this sorted array, and then if I choose k equals to five, uh, what I would want to do is I would want to greedily keep taking the the lowest integers that don't appear, and I'll do that until I've added five elements. So in this case, it will look like like that. So I've tried to include the lowest view, and now we can see that. Um, we can, now we can see that nums consists of some some of the first like x elements for some x plus the elements in nums which are greater than x. And uh, basically the main idea is um, if you can if you can f find an x such that there are k missing elements here, i.e. out of the numbers from 1 to x, 
if at least k of them don't appear in nums, um, then I can choose this x and it's possible. And if I chose a greater x, that would give me a wider range of numbers to choose k out of from. And that means that um, if I can choose an x such that out of the numbers from 1 to x, at least k of them aren't already taken, then for any y which is greater than x, I can do the same. And that means I can binary search on the lowest possible x such that it works. So here's how my code works. So I'm trying to check whether I can, um, I'm using mid here. I'm trying to see if I can make my numbers such that out of the numbers from one to mid, more, at least K of them aren't already taken by numbers. The way I do this is I start with mid numbers, one to X, and then for each number in nums, um, if it is less than mid, that means that I can't take it because that number already exists. So I subtract one from the count. Um, if I can take k numbers, then I'm going to set my high to my current value, to my mid, otherwise I'll set low to mid plus one. And finally, to get the, the total sum, I'm taking the sum of all numbers from one up to low. Um, that's just the triangular numbers formula. And then for each number in nums, um, that means that uh, if, if for each element in nums, if it was less than or equal to low, that means that um, that means that out of the numbers from 1 up to x, these were the numbers that were already present in nums. So they weren't the numbers which I added. Therefore, I subtract them off the count. Uh, my error my, was I forgot to make to remove duplicates from nums because I didn't read that there weren't any duplicates. OK. Uh, this doesn't look very good for me. I think I can still win like a water bottle or something, but not a backpack, which is what I was trying to go for. Um, I'm a bit upset at myself actually, because that could have been quite a good time. Uh, anyway, for this question, uh, first I'm storing two dictionaries, left and right. Um, left X represents the node, which is the left child of X, and then similarly for right. Um, all I do here is I pass the input for each parent, child, and is left. If it's left, then I'm going to set the left of parent to the child, otherwise I set the right of the parent to the child. And then rec x, uh, th this returns the subtree written, written at x. So first I construct a tree with where the root is x. Um, if x has a left child, I'll set the left child of this resulting tree um, to the recursively the subtree rooted at that left node. And then I'll do the same for the right. If the right child exists, then I'll set the right, right child of this tree to the recursively generated subtree, which is rooted at that right node. And then I'll just return it. Um, all that's left to do is I need to find out which one is the root. The root is the only node that doesn't contain a child. So what I do is first, I'm going to I'm going to get all nodes and then for each node and then I'm going to get all nodes that have a parent and for each of the if they uh, and then I'm just trying to find a node which is in this node all of the nodes that doesn't have a parent that's what I'm doing here uh, technically technically nodes doesn't have all nodes it only has nodes which contain at least one child but um, but I think that but that works um, because there's the root that because the root is guaranteed to have at least one child. Okay, I'm glad that yeah, the root has at least one child, so therefore it will always be in this nodes. Um, finally, here's the last one. Now I'm a bit stupid, but <laughs> basically, um, the main idea here is I'm going to keep adding elements from nums from left to right, and then when I see two adjacent elements that are not comprised then I'm just going to merge them with their LCM. And that's literally it. I'm just iterating from left to right of nums. I'm adding the elements. While the last two elements are, have, a, have a GCD greater than one, I will replace them with their LCM. And then I'll just return this array. I think this is it's a pretty simple algorithm, actually. 
And as, as it says here, it's also guaranteed to always lead to the same result. Um, this is mo most common. You can also find this type of idea with like binary strings and stuff. Anyway, that's probably all I have for you today. Rank, well, it might not be rank 10, I think. It, it might be about rank 10, so we'll see. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.